Hey everybody, so today we are going to be going over a few mapping, merging, and deduping techniques that I think are the most accessible out there uh, for those that are getting started or for those that have to do a lot of uh, thinking and, and planning around how they're going to do these kinds of operations so that you can either test out your theories and kind of get an understanding of what is actually in the data so that you can do this. Also, you can make your own mapping file with this. So even if you're not the one going in and doing the operation of going into your real database, getting the, the, the things that have been identified as a dupe and doing the merge operations, this, these techniques will help you create the, the template or, or the directions for those that may be doing the, the work eventually. So that's another benefit of doing it in, in this way. Also, if you have a larger data set, I would strongly recommend having done this so you kind of, again, get that feel for what you're trying to do. But ultimately, you do probably want to automate this in any way, shape, or form. So if you are working with a smaller data set or if you are working on research or you're trying to you know, do some experimentation, I think these techniques are going to be really helpful for you. So with all of that said, let's jump into some of the techniques that you can use in Proche. So today we're going to be using primarily two data sources plus linked data that is from BioPortal. So I am going to be walking through a uh, ontology that is more terminology based, though the classes are uh, things that exist in the world, like concepts. Uh, these are a little bit different than an upper ontology, which would be more like SCOS or Dublin Core or something of that nature. You can also use these same mapping techniques for schema mapping. It doesn't even have to be ontology based. So I want to just put that out there for this video that these techniques can be used for multiple, but I am going to be walking through a more terminology focused approach here. And these are all going to be from the medical space. The two vocabularies that I am using are the EDDA, E-D-D-A vocabulary. That is something that I will link down below as well as a sub in for an enterprise taxonomy and it's very bare bones i created it just so that we had an example in this video to map into so think of this as your own enterprise ontology taxonomy or even general data source so those are the ones we're going to be using in this video the first technique we are going to go over is the citation method this method is really only good for, I would say, humans that are doing research and want to share how they are gathering data and mapping them together for specific research projects, and that can be internal or external. Um, or if you are creating more like documents, not necessarily a structured ontology or taxonomy, but more of like a um, document of definitions and synonyms and all kinds of things that machine learning can learn off of. So here we're on cohort study and I will link all these uh, data sources down below too if you wanna do all of this uh, just like I am. So you'll see here that um, this has not just the taxonomy itself, but also the metadata. So we have definitions, uh, we have different codes. If you are using this for machine learning or you know, LLM grounding or whatever you are doing, uh, you want to make sure that you are specifying uh, what you need for your use case. So as an example, this right here in this definition is the citation. So this is the method we're using. We're saying, hey, there are multiple definitions of cohort study and we are mapping them together. So we know the context is maybe not exact across the industry. It is slightly different. So you put the citation in here. The citation should follow the citation for either a dictionary or an encyclopedia. Now, if you're using this for machine learning, you might want to consider uh, taking these citations and out when you're actually training your machine learning on it. And if you're using RDF star, instead of having just a triple, you can actually have a quad where uh, and this serves for property graphs as well, where instead of having the triple, which would be cohort study definition, and then the value here, you would have cohort study definition value. 
and then a fourth element, which would be citation, which is what you're seeing here. Now, the other thing that I would strongly recommend doing is let's look at case study for this example. You'll see here in this definition that case reports the actual, and this goes back to the citation standards that are out there, um, the entry in the encyclopedia or the dictionary, and in this case, mesh, uh, is noted. I would actually prefer if this would have the UID and the human readable label. The reason for that is because as you can see, this was this data was, was gathered in 2014. So this could have changed. The label could have changed. I might have a hard time tracking down where this information came from. So um, having the UID in addition to the human label uh, would be helpful here too. So this is essentially what the citation method is doing. You cite where the information is coming from. And by way of doing that, you're mapping all of those sources together in your target to say that case study is defined in these ways by these data sources. You then have the data source IDs. Now I'll stop here and also say that at the time that this was created, some of these were not linked data sources. Hence why the ID is here, not necessarily the URI. Now, all of these are on BioPortal for the most part. So um, I'll, I'll walk through that in technique number two, but that's why these are not the URIs. Always use URIs when, when you can. And that's the other thing with this technique is if you are using linked data or any of the other techniques that we talk about here, and one of your sources that you want to map in doesn't have linked data or it's not even digitized. As an example, I had to use this technique for an old version of the NASA thesaurus when I was trying to gather some historical uh, context on uh, aeronautics. It wasn't digitized. There was nothing that I could point to other than the physical copy that was in a library. In that case, the citation method is still useful when you are going through those kinds of exercises. But here's the other thing to note is in this vocabulary, for some reason, they decided to use variant instead of like SCOS alt label or, or something of that nature. So I would have updated that to be more uh, industry standard. And the other problem is none of these are cited. Now you can see that most of these are near duplicate. So it's really just gathering all that information together in one place. So maybe you don't necessarily need citation. And maybe if you're just using machine learning or maybe recommendation engine training or something like that, you don't need citations on everything. But if you are using this for human annotation and human consumption, you probably do want to have citation where all of this information comes from. Going into the second technique, we're going to talk about linked data, which is probably the more popular way of doing this. Now, you'll see here at the very bottom, I have added these two variants. You'll notice this ID and this is mesh. Let's go up to the mesh ID. There you go. It's the same ID and the National Cancer Institute thesaurus, NCI thesaurus. That's its ID. Let's go down and that's its ID. So basically what I did for this exercise is I went into BioPortal, see National Cancer Institute thesaurus. I found cohort study in the thesaurus and this is BioPortal. Everyone can go to it. And I grabbed the ID. This is way more useful. The reason it's useful is because you're basically giving any system that looks at your mapping file, because that's basically what we're doing here. And you're saying, hey, if you want to find out all the information that the uh, NCI has on this topic, use this link. This also hel is helpful if you're using APIs to gather up more information. That is the beauty of linked data. You don't necessarily have to pick up all the data that's already stored online for this vocabulary and put it into your system. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is have the pointer, which is this, to the data. If I clicked on this, it would go directly to this page. And this is where you can use the API to gather all of this information and use it for whatever you need to use it for. You don't necessarily have to have all of that in your mapping file or in your actual vocabulary or ontology. So as you can see here, there's a lot more information than we have in our mapping file. And again, this is because these data sources are living data sources. So linked data is constantly getting updated. So instead of having to rerun all of your data over and over again, 
Again, maybe you have a use case where you do need that, but if you don't, just suffice by having these links in here so that you know these are equivalencies in these other vocabularies. All right, going into the next technique, this is looking at URIs internally. Now, you might wonder, well, you know, do I have to have resolvable URIs internally? Do I have to set up websites for this stuff to, to work? And the answer is no. So if you are using um, any tools, like I know GraphDB does this, or, or even Pool Party, you can have multiple data sources uh, and they all have different URIs and you can point to those data sources with those URIs internally and they're resolvable internally. So this is not externally available. What we're going to do here is we are going to grab cohort design. See this, this URI exists. It's right here. And we're going to grab it. We're going to copy it. And we're going to say, okay, cohort study. Let's go to the enterprise taxonomy. And you can see here that we also have something for cohort study right here. Now I told you it's, it's pretty bare bones. So what I can do is I can go in here and because I loaded all of these properties from the ETA vocabulary, I have them available here. And again, that's to make sure that the schemas are the same. Again, I wouldn't necessarily use variant today. I would use something different, but um, these tools can be used for schema mapping too. So here I'm going to have variant selected. I'm going to put the value in. After I have it in, I can press okay. And you can now see that this is listed as a variant. Now this is actually showing up as resolvable because this vocabulary, the Edda design vocabulary, if we go over, is actually on BioPortal. So you can tell this is cohort study, this is the ID. So this is still a linked data example, but here's, here's the difference. If I go back to the study designs, and let's say uh, I am not going to, I am adding to the Edda design, and this is another enterprise vocabulary where I am now customizing something and I'm going to have something in here uh, called uh, test cases I'm going to add that and let's say now I want to add that into my other enterprise vocabulary I don't want these to live in the same place necessarily I just need to map them together and this is again in my enterprise so I'm going to grab this IRI I'm going to go to my methods and let's say in my enterprise, that is another form of basic research for us. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, this is the variant. I'm going to put that in and we're going to say, okay. And now you can still see that it is resolvable, but it's not going to resolve if I put, if I see, doesn't go anywhere. If, if I try to go onto the open web, but I can host this on my internal servers and it will also resolve that way. So this is how you would do that linked data, but not linked open data. This is just linked data inside. All right, now we're going to go into the next technique, which is the merge operation that Protege allows you to do. What you're going to do is you're going to go up to refactor. You're gonna to go to merge ontologies. You wanna make sure that your, the ontologies you wanna merge are all loaded into Proje already before you do this. So merge ontologies, and you can see I already made one called merging. So we're going to merge these two together, just like that. Gonna hit continue. You can merge into a new ontology, which is what I would suggest, and then you get to name it. If you merge into an existing ontology, the only reason I say be weary of that is because uh, when you merge one into another, the first one that you merged out of, if you are not careful, you can save it that way. And you basically lose all the data that was in the original ontology. So just be aware of that. So you would say merge into new ontology, I'm gonna rename it here, and then you can press continue and it creates it. I've already done that. So let's just go to the merge. All right, so here you can see my merge and we've got my medical methods here. Right? So these ones are my medical ones. And then this one is from Edda. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, what did that do? Because <laughs> let's look, let's open this up for a second. So we've got 
cohort study here and cohort study here. You can see that it did, it did emerge, but it did not do a dedupe. So this, if you ran a reasoner off of it, right? So if you go up here, you pick reasoner and you'd pick any of these, it would run across and it would say, eh, eh, you are not allowed to have two of these in the same vocabulary. So the reason you might wanna consider doing a merge is because then you can go through and do the steps of getting the overlaps and making decisions on those overlaps, but you also might consider doing a cosine similarity between the label and the definitions and other metadata uh, across uh, both the target vocabulary and the source vocabulary to see where they are similar enough that you would consider it a almost perfect match, a perfect match, or something where you need maybe your your team to go through and really massage it to, to do the merge. So cosine similarity tools, there's tons of them out there. I'll link some down below. Those are really helpful. If you have a machine learning group, they can build one of those for you. Um, and then that helps you with some of the merge and dedupe the deduping pieces of this but it didn't do anything with the overlaps. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to decide what you want to do uh, with the mapping. So there's two, two ways you can do this. All right, so looking at cohort study. So there's three ways to do this. So let's go through each one. The first is not my favorite, but we'll show you. So we have cohort study down here in the study design. You open this up and you get your full merged list. You pick the other term like that and now you can see that they are connected so let's go look at this and you can see here they have been connected now if you're going to do it this way you basically are signing up for these two taxonomies to now just be one taxonomy maybe that's what you're interested in so be it if you do this you will have to go through and make sure that there are uh, no issues with reasoners now they both have different you'll see here they have different iris so technically it's okay according to standards but i think practically you need to change the label at the very least so this one could be um using again that citation method or you can go in and just uh change the label See, it does this and says equal to cohort study. Now I'll go down here to cohort study. This has not changed its label, but now you can see that these are two distinct things. Even though we are mapping them together, you now know they come from two different data sources essentially. All right, so the next way you can do this is basically uh, merging things as you go and deleting things that you no longer need. So that is where you really do have to take everything, scrape out everything from each vocabulary and move it into your target vocabulary. All right, so um, Protege has an option where you can take the metadata and merge it into your target vocabulary and then you can delete the source taxonomy term or schema field, whatever you're using uh, for your mapping after you're done moving the data that you want. And I'll walk you through how that looks, but also keep in mind if you're doing this with a lot of terms or you're doing this with a lot of vocabularies or you're doing it quite often, you want to automate this. You don't wanna do it by hand. So let's walk through what that looks like. You're gonna highlight the term that you're taking data from. You're gonna to go to edit. You're going to go to merge into entity. And now we're gonna merge it, let's say to clinical study. So we're gonna start to type in clinical, clinical study. Again, you can go down here and make sure it's the correct IRI if, if you wanna do that. Um, as soon as you start to type, this shows up. So let's say clinical study, double click, and we're gonna say, okay. Now, what you'll notice is clinical study up here now has all the information, including the children of uh, what we had before. Now, you'll notice also that our old term has has updated its, its label. 
So you can see they now have the exact same information. You do that because, and, and this by the way, took the name of our target because we're mapping to the target. The assumption here from Protege is you're gonna get rid of this one. So how do you do that? Well, you wanna go to, just to be careful, <laughs> you wanna go to the target, right? And then you're gonna find, see it's added this here. You can go and say, nope, get rid of it in the old uh, source vocabulary I'm mapping from. And you do that and it goes away. So now you've just done a merge and dedupe in Protege. That's how you would manually do it using Protege. Another way to do this is, again, we're on our cohort study here. We can grab our IRI here and we can go up to our target vocabulary and we can say, instead of having an equivalent to down here, we can add it as an annotation. So we can say it's a variant, we can pop this in like that. And the system is smart enough to know that this exists elsewhere in the vocabulary. So this is another way to kind of tie those two things together. All right, so those are a few techniques and I do stress a few. I wanted to show some of the most accessible ways to, to start thinking through mapping, some techniques to make this a more actionable file if you yourself are not doing the mapping. And so these are ways that I have used in my past if you are interested in more techniques, uh, even some more automated techniques and tools to do this type of mapping, please let me know down below. And with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.